Who are the 10 kings of Daniel chapter 7? Well, we're going to deal with that question today, and I have a guest, and uh, by the way, his name is Mondo Gonzalez. Mondo, welcome uh, to Prophecy Watchers. Tell uh, everybody uh, a little about Mondo Gonzalez. Uh, I've been a pastor for 15 years. Uh, I've had a variety of adventures around the world doing archaeology um, with L.A. Marzulli and some other things. and. Uh, um, just traveling, and, and it's been fun. It's been good. God has, I've been watching Prophecy for 30 years now. And I understand that you teach the Bible verse by verse. Yes, I do. <laughs> in an expository way. In other words, you teach people what the Bible actually says, and I'm all for that, yep. by the way. Can't hide. You have to teach the text, for sure. Indeed you do. <laughs> now, uh, in uh, November of 2020, we published uh, uh, an issue of the Prophecy Watcher, and on the cover it says, Who are the Ten Kings in Daniel and Revelation? Now, you've read the article. You and I have talked mm -hmm. about it. And when I wrote this, I, I thought, uh, you know, very strongly that those ten kings, which we've all pondered over yeah. the years, have suddenly become relevant. I think they're almost visible in the world today. What do you think? Well, that was my question. As I, was, I really wanted to ask you, what brought you to write this article at this time? It dawned on me that some of the people uh, in the world today called oligarchs, mm -hmm. and that's become a very popular word. Who knew about the word oligarch uh, a generation ago or even ten years ago? But today it's very, very popular. Oligarchs are financial wizards who have gotten up into the trillions of dollars. <clears throat> they're working high tech, they're launching satellites, they're doing robotics, they're doing computer uh, artificial intelligence, they're changing the world and they are the world's wealthiest men. Mm -hmm. But they don't necessarily have a nationalistic connection. They are sort of their own little government. All, and by, if you don't believe it, just try to cross them. <laughs> it's, true, right. it's true. We'll talk about that. And so it came to me that maybe we live in the, in the time so close to the catching away of the church mm. that those ten kings might be recognizable. Well, what I thought was when I read the article, it just in, it inspired me in many ways to to see and to think outside the box because you know you, you, in prophecy there's a lot of speculation about who they are and generally yeah. the the speculation is that they're governmental people. But what you brought out here is no, let's think outside the box for a moment. And also the the timing is you asked you know are you watching for the ten kings because no. we often in prophecy watch for a, a single figure, the antichrist figure, the coming world ruler, and yet. What precedes him, biblically, are these ten financial oligarchs, these ten players, uh, the modern word is ten influencers if you wanted to say that. Yeah. And they then hand all, the, all their influence, they hand over to the single person. So the question is, which I thought was helpful, what are we looking for? We need to look for the ten figures first before the Antichrist comes on the scene. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to uh, uh, get up to speed, I'm, I'm looking at Daniel chapter 7. And Daniel chapter 7 talks about four beasts, mm -hmm. and the beasts are empires, great world empires, and, and everybody agrees about that. Mm -hmm. And the fourth beast, and whom Daniel calls uh, dreadful and terrible and strong, with iron teeth, which would be iron technology. I've always thought, mm -hmm. you know, it can come after you and eat you up <laughs> if it wants to. And that's the setting uh, for this prophecy. It devours, it breaks in pieces. It stamps the residue with its feet, says Daniel, and it was diverse from all the beasts before it, and it has ten horns. And then he goes on to talk about the ten horns, and another little horn comes mm -hmm. up from among the ten, and eliminates three. So now we're down to eight horns, and that carries you over to the book of Revelation, which reiterates this whole story. Now we know that the book of Revelation is talking about <clears throat> the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. So this is happening in the tribulation period, but wait a minute. Could the ten kings be alive today? If so, what are they doing? 
how are they exercising power? And as you begin to look at the people called oligarchs today, they truly are exercising power. And that's what started me on this, this article. I think too, one of the things you brought out, which was excellent, is the book of Revelation says that these are kings that don't have a kingdom as of yet. Yeah. And so that's super important that if we're looking for people who are maybe the leaders of Spain or whatever, I mean, you think about all these names in the past, that's, they're not, they don't have a kingdom right now. So they're gonna be risen up in some other way to provide influence and they're gonna provide something for that eighth horn, you know, the 11th horn and the Antichrist. And then it says that they will be given, they will be given power with the beast for one hour. Yes. So he's gonna come along, they're gonna make some sort of agreement. They have something to offer him. And th that's what I find fascinating is I think this is helpful to us in looking that we, we shouldn't look necessarily for governing leaders. We're looking for other people that have something to offer this coming world ruler. And what do you have to have in order to be a, uh, a king, if you will, at that level? Mm -hmm. what do you, well, you have to have an area of expertise, yep. perhaps, that nobody else has. You have to have lots and lots of money. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have connections globally. Yeah. Uh, you have to have forged these connections with the, the financiers of the world, mm -hmm. you know, the Europeans, the Chinese. Uh, in other words, you have to become a kind of a globalist in your thinking. Yeah. And guess what? As we look at the world today, we see those things. And, and uh, uh, well, let's talk for a minute about uh, someone who is launching satellites. Yeah, I think... I'll read, if you don't, if it's okay, I'll read this thing that you have in the article which inspired me in my thinking. You say here, oligarchs are in a constant competition for world domination. And the old political ties of the 20th century are being steadily altered to fit a new world order. But this was the line that struck me. You said, that's an old term, but now it is buttressed by high level digital technology that was only a dream a decade ago. Yeah. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there, and if we, as we think about the past you know, five years or 10 years, or really even 18 months, what we see, or what I see out there, is these major global players that are increasing technology. And so, uh, based on what you said there, I was like, I wanna, I wanna research some of this, because when, when we look at technology, it's changed. You know, you're an astronomy guy, you love NASA, but we, now, who's launching to space, it's not NASA. That's right. It's not a government agency anymore. It's all these other uh, non-governmental you know, uh, companies, which I find fascinating that they have now become the leaders and you know, who would have thought, I mean, going back to the 60s and even the landing on the moon or whatever, no one would have thought that it would have been handled privately. Yeah, mm -hmm. well now, at the same time, mm -hmm. Uh, and by the way, you have been a pastor, and, and you mm -hmm. have a, a sense of uh, of teaching and, and 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 bringing Christians to maturity. Mm -hmm. And and I know that that was your goal as a pastor. Yeah. It's always been your goal, mm -hmm. and uh, probably since the very beginning, you had a very idealistic idea. But what we find, and what we actually see is a slow drift mm -hmm. away from sound doctrine. Yeah. And this is going on at the same time as the, the, the oligarchies that are developing, yeah. Yeah. what you were talking about a moment ago. Yeah. So in other words, we're seeing a rapid uh, slippage of society. Mm -hmm. I think too that when you look at, uh, well, let's talk about that in the sense of the technology. What are these players you know, bringing? And when you look at the technology that they're bringing, um, what you see recently is um, SpaceX and others right. uh, are launching thousands of satellites. What they're doing is they're developing worldwide technology for internet and, and other things. And, and you have all these major players. I mean, Starlink already has a thousand up. They're gonna launch 60 per week uh, or every other week. And others already have hundreds up there. And you, they have permission for, from the FCC, 30,000. Well, there's only 9,000 uh, artificial pieces of equipment up there now. And so they, they desire this worldwide blanket of uh, er, low earth orbit, uh, low latency satellite technology. And they, you know, they, they're gonna sell it, but it also provides technology. And, and then you say, well, what for? Well, there's a lot of sinister reasons you can do, but you see the technology there. You also see, as you mentioned, 
that these same players are involved in the advancement of artificial intelligence. And you think, well, what does that have to do with it? It has to do with everything because artificial intelligence uh, it requires lots of data. Well, how do you get data? Cameras, clicks, everything you can imagine out in the social media platform, but it requires technology, uh, computing power, as well as engineering. And when I was looking at this, I thought, wow, um, they, they, they're involved in artificial intelligence. But secondly, they're, these same players are involved in the quantum computer research that if you can uh, develop the quantum computers, you, you can magnify uh, your ability to compute all of this data that's coming in every single day at exponential levels that the current computers are limited. And you start wondering, and, and of course, data is everything for artificial intelligence and autonomy, all these things that you would see as it relates to technology. It's now, pretty amazing. Let's put this together with, mm -hmm. with uh, another thing that I'm just looking at as mm -hmm. you're talking. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel 7.23, uh, <clears throat> uh, Daniel's talking about the fourth beast. And he says, the fourth beast uh, uh, shall be the fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, shall devour the whole earth. Yeah. In other words, a global society. Yep. Uh, and it shall tread down and break in pieces. In other words, this is not a, a good kingdom no. at all. And it's called the fourth kingdom, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I believe that we're, we are descended from Western civilization, mm -hmm. the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. So here we are. The final disposition of that fourth beast is it's going to rip, it's going to tear, it's going to reestablish itself. And I got to tell you, when I look at the world today, um, what do you see? I mean, I, I know what I see. It's, it's, to me, it's scary because what we see in Scripture, and then you see, we don't have to guess whether the, uh, the horn is, is righteous. He's, he's a blasphemer. It says the name, you know, name's written with blasphemy on it. And so when we look at this technology that is being developed, and, and we see you know, the biotechnology, whether it's Neuralink or you see um, the, the stuff that they're doing, again, all the artificial intelligence, you start going, well, what if that surveillance system all yeah. the ability to be worldwide now, every inch of the earth covered with um, satellites that are there providing two-way communications for surveillance right. or even um, you know, smartphones or whatever. But you look and then now over the last year, we don't have to guess because we see um, these big players and, and social media and other things. And now we've seen censorship begin to happen, uh, censoring certain things. We didn't like what you were saying. You don't fit the narrative. Uh, we have the whole woke movement. Um, where and you know, kings do that. Exactly. You know, the king says, thou shalt not ever utter these words. And he can, by the way, he's got the power to, to stop you. The control of information. Right. Haven't we seen that in the last six months? We, we, we're seeing the bare beginnings of what I think is going to be a global monster. Yeah. In fact, uh, that's what Daniel says. This is the fourth beast, the fourth kingdom. Uh, it, shall be de it shall devour the whole earth. Yeah. And then you skip down to Daniel 7.24. And the ten kings of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and others shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first, and shall subdue three kings. Okay. So in, in their rise to power, the, these kings don't necessarily all agree Ooh. with each other. There is a, they're knocking each other off to see who can be the top guy, <laughs> and guess who ends up being the top guy? Mm -hmm. And we see in Scripture, you know, why do these people do it? Well, the love of money is the, is the root of all evil, right? And we see yeah. greed and other things. And, uh, you know, with the, what we've seen over just in America, all the major players just this year, 2020, they've added two and a half trillion dollars of worth of, to, to, their, to their portfolios for more research and more satellites and, and, again, a broader platform. And it's amazing watching the technology. Again, what you, what you wrote here, and you look at these players and you start getting into... Um, some of the players in China, uh, there's a book out written by Kai Fu Lee called The AI Superpowers. Highly recommend it. It's not a Christian guy by any means, but he lays the foundation for how China is, is almost on par with us in so many levels and how, se mo not say most, that would be unfair, but s they have many, 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 the digitization of their culture. Some cities you go there, already cashless. Yeah. We talk about cashless society how many years? They're already that way. Already that way. Yep. And it's not credit cards. And by the way, this the, the king who finally uh, uh, assumes full power 
has a quality that's mentioned a couple places in the Bible. He has a mouth speaking <laughs> great things. Yes. And it, it came to me that this could be talking about AI, artificial intelligence, yeah. which once it becomes consolidated will become uh, undefeatable. It will formulate, it will uh, create uh, relationships, it will create uh, situations that are in its favor, and it will tell people this artificial intelligence yeah. what to do and what not to do, mm -hmm. and its power will be consolidated in the Antichrist's yeah. realm. So says the Bible. Yeah. And so you, all of this is beginning to to emerge from the mist, and we're beginning to see it uh, with clarity. Yeah. Anybody that that again, when I see all this, I think, you know, again, if you're on the couch and you you don't. This is the time to wake up because we're yeah. seeing we're seeing this stuff happen, and especially as it relates to artificial intelligence, we see some of that, you know, with the, the automation of, of factories and and, right. you know, and others. And but yet there's 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 a three different levels in artificial intelligence. You you have what we see now, but then you have what they call reaching a point of artificial general intelligence. Yeah, you know, it's a little faster. And then they talk about the the epitome of that would be the singularity when it comes online, it rec it, it has self awareness and it begins to improve itself and take precautions to minimize its, its own demise. And I think that uh, we are making progress and technologies there. And again, these are all the players that are investing billions of dollars, like again, in quantum yeah. computing. When the co quantum computer comes, it will be able to handle the uh, uh, incalculable amount of data because it'll finally be able to compute all that data quickly. And I think, thinking about the singularity in Revelation 13, it says that the Antichrist was able to give life and, and bring it, and it would be able to, you know, to bring the life on its own. To me, I think that's a great first century illustration, the best he could, of, of, of a singularity happening. Uh, of a singularity, meaning that at, at some point, artificial intelligence, which everybody's talking about now, becomes such a fact that it cannot be denied. Uh, and, and in fact, you are open-mouthed at, at what yeah. it's doing yeah. and what it says to you. And what it says to you is very, very well outlined in the Bible. <clears throat> the people who are under its power. It has, a stro the, to, to, it has the power to destroy, yeah. to make, to break lives yeah. and mm -hmm. fortunes. It goes, it, it goes even against God's own people. The two witnesses are yep. killed yep. Uh, in Revelation. And the whole world sees them. Yeah. How does that happen? Okay. The guy in the middle of Africa, he, he's able to see because he has satellite internet now and he can watch the whole right. world sees them rise and get raptured. I mean, that's incredible technology and, and we think, oh, there's, you know, who's going to be in the middle of Africa filming? And we have had satellite technology for a while, but this makes everything personal. All, you know, seven and a half billion, that's their goal is to be able to give everybody on earth, every last person, every last inch, the ability to connect. Yeah. Like most monarchies, even you go back to the Roman Empire, and uh, when they finally established a government and a Senate, yeah. and the Senate convened in Rome and to, to do good things, to pass good laws for the population so the population would grow and be wealthy and mm -hmm. so forth. But there were a few bad guys, <laughs> yeah. and the Senate fell, and uh, then we had the rise of Nero, uh, whom I have always thought was the type of the Antichrist. Certainly, yep. And, uh, and, and so that all collapsed, and we seem to be circling back to that situation a, a, a in today's world. I think the scary thing, you know, in looking at what we see is uh, one of the description in 2 Thessalonians 2 and, and all through Revelation is the word deception. The, the deception is going to be so great. We see it in Matthew right. 24, the elect, if it's possible, would be deceived. And so when you look at this, and if we were to, if we were to look at it from a non-Christian perspective, you think of the way that it's presented. Hey, this is going to be great, Gary. You, have an, you walk in, you turn on the lights, you say this, you know, um, you have your, your, um, 
your vacuum vacuuming, your dishes are automatic, <laughs> everything is wonderful, it's attractive. Right. You know, we have people working there and we'll give you a, uh, a universal income so that you don't have to work because we have robots now. And so you don't have to do that. And they, they make it as how wonderful it is. And in probably in some ways, it is very attractive. But yet we know that at the end, this beast that, that the scripture describes, it's sinister. It seeks to devour and destroy and to stamp, and it is filled with blasphemies and evil and deception. You know, uh, a lot of commentators have talked about the number 10, mm -hmm. and the Bible speaks of these 10 kings. And 10, as it's used in the Bible, is always, uh, it's called the number of ordinal perfection. Mm -hmm. And it has, it stands for uh, a foundational truth, like the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is a group of ten, and, and, and it's got everything you need to know, and, and there it is, very concise. And you find a number of tens in the Bible, and in every case it's a statement of something that has been decreed. It's going to happen. And here we have the Ten Kings yeah. in that same modality in the Bible. And, and I, as I wrote this article, and we don't have time to talk about it in this program, but I uh, go through a lot of explanation about the number 10, because it's an important yeah. biblical number. Yeah, it's, it's not coincidental. There are no coincidences it's in God's exact. world. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> By the way, uh, this is our uh, November 2020 uh, magazine, and I've, right on the cover, 10 crowns and the question. Who are the ten kings in Daniel and Revelation? If you'd like to uh, see a, a copy of this magazine, uh, we're going to pause right now and you'll find out how you can get it. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Bob Ulrich, Gary Stearman's partner and the co-founder of Prophecy Watchers. I would love to tell you how you can become a subscriber to our wonderful Prophecy magazine creatively named The Prophecy Watcher. And ready for this? How you can get eight powerful prophecy DVDs as a free bonus for subscribing today. Every day, the ancient prophecies of the Bible get more and more exciting as we watch world events come into perfect alignment with the words of the ancient prophets. Examine the pre-trib rapture doctrine taught by the Apostle Paul. Come to a deeper understanding of the giants of Genesis 6 and the real reason for the flood of Noah. Read the shocking things we see coming out of the world of science and technology, mind-blowing advances in transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Keep a close eye for a series of wars coming very soon to the Middle East. The Bible's a supernatural book, and we enjoy covering the fringe subjects and dark corners of Scripture as well. UFOs, the Nephilim, the miracles of the Bible, and so much more. It's a one-of-a-kind publication full of articles that will make you a Bible prophecy expert and prepare you for the future. We have a very special subscription offer for you today. For your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value, but it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. How would we put a cap on, on this thought that we're dealing with today, in today's world? Uh, are we to be afraid? Like, wow, this is coming. It's inevitable. 
there is going to be a mouth speaking great things. Uh, there, there is going to be an evil kingdom. Uh, should we be unduly afraid? You know, as, as a pastor, you're, you're you know, you pastoring too, your heart is for people and your heart is to teach the truth and the scripture and, and to be, uh, you know, represent Jesus well. But it's also... Um, it's uh, to build faith. You know, we look out, and, and again, right after I had read your article, it, it, this, this is what I would say, is that people need to watch. They need to be aware. Jesus talked about being ready, being ready, watching, keeping your eyes, and, and, and keep your eyes looking at things. You know, not necessarily every newspaper is going to have something, but the goal is when you see these things, uh, to be to rejoice, Jesus says, when you see these things, look up. Your redemption is drawn near, and instead of having fear, we have faith. Because God, God didn't give us prophecy to scare us or to scare the world. He gave it to say, look, I have, I'm, I'm ordered. I have the whole thing figured out, and to be of good cheer, Jesus says, I've yeah. overcome the world. And He can change your world in ways that you haven't even dreamed of. By the way, did I mention? Uh, since you, you talked about watching, did mm -hmm. I mention that the, the uh, name of our magazine is The Prophecy Watcher? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I, I think of uh, you know, Jesus, and, and he's given the, the Olivet Discourse, and the, one of the last things he says in Mark 13, 37 is, what I say to you, I say to everybody, be watching. And I thought, man, what a powerful phrase that Jesus gives us this command to be on the lookout, to wake up, to be alive, but to be encouraged. So that's my heart for people. We've got a little over a minute left, and I'm, my Bible is open to Revelation 13, and it's the place where you find uh, this, this king, this miserable, murdering king who comes up out of the ten, and, and it says in verse 5 here, and it, there was given to him a mouth mm. speaking great things, and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And the reason I'm reading this is that 42 months is the second half mm -hmm. of the tribulation. Yep. We're not going to be in the tribulation, right? That's not what I see. And that's why sure. not? <laughs> well, that's a whole other <laughs> that's a whole other episode. But the Lord's gonna the Lord's gonna take us out. I really think I'm, I'm a pre-trib guy all the way. I think Scripture defends it, and it's it's our blessed hope. Titus 2:13. It's our blessed hope. And the days are getting yep. very very. Uh, close, I think, to uh, to that event, that blessed hope that we have. And I just wanted you to kind of share uh, this with me today because uh, I know we believe the same thing. Uh, we believe that not pessimistically no. uh, when we see 10 oligarchs looming before us, and we see them every day on TV, it seems like. You could be a little bit afraid, but you're not. Nope. Nope. Thanks for being here, Mondo. It's been a pleasure, Gary. Thank uh, you. And his name is Mondo Gonzalez, and I've enjoyed the conversation today, and I hope you do read that article. I'm Gary Stearman. You keep watching. We are. Mm -hmm.